seconds to allow everyone to, to get situated, but hi everyone, super excited for today's webinar. Thank you all for making the time. Um, hopefully you don't hear thunder or see some lightning in the background. There's a pretty gnarly storm going on where I am in Richmond, Virginia. <laughs> Um, but can everyone see my screen okay? Wesley Francis, can you see it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we got it. Perfect. Okay, well, let's go ahead and get started. So um, for those of you who haven't joined us before, I do see quite a few familiar faces, but I'm Georgie on the customer success team and we do webinar Wednesdays um, the second week of every month. So today, really excited to be talking about facilities management. Um, on the line today, we have two of our guest speakers from open space. I'll introduce them in just a moment, but we're really gonna be talking about virtual coordination of operations and maintenance work, and also how to use open space to, to minimize downtime. And then as we do with all the other webinar Wednesdays, we'll be concluding with a Q&A section. Um, so anyone that has any questions, they don't have to pertain to the webinar topic. Um, anything open space related, feel free to ask. And during, during the presentation, please, chime in with questions, type in the, the Q&A or the chat box and happy to answer them. Um, but without further ado, our, our speakers today, thank you so much for joining Francis and Wesley. So Francis is an enterprise account executive with OpenSpace. Um, he has a lot of experience in the facilities management space and works closely with our customers uh, to show them how OpenSpace can help in that arena, as does Wesley. He actually comes from the construction industry. Um, I'll let the two of them introduce themselves and then we'll get started. Francis? Oh, and also I'm Georgie. I'm on the customer success team and I've been with OpenSpace for about a year and I am facilitating these webinars. So Francis? Sure, hey everybody, nice to meet, uh, nice to meet everybody on the call here. Uh, virtually so yeah my name is francis i've been at uh, open space for a little over uh, over a year now and um originally started at a company called honest buildings uh, we were in new york uh a project management solution uh brookfield oxford uh, a few other big names were investors in us uh, rudin family in the city as well and then uh, we got acquired by procore which was pretty neat uh and then procore went public and then one of the top requested integrations with procore was this company open space so uh you know after something like that happens, you kind of luck out as an individual. You get a lot of phone calls, a lot of job interviews if you want to go anywhere else. Um, I actually ended up calling open space myself just because I saw the technology and kind of the, the huge use case and then the, the, the big uh, opportunity that some of the you know top engineers that work here from MIT and Stanford and stuff were, were creating and had in front of them. So as George, you mentioned, most of the people at this company came from the industry, either from the tech side or uh, actually worked in, in the industry, you know, with like Turner or Gobain or um, Suffolk or some other companies. Um, so it's pretty neat. We're, we're focused on you and your and your team uh, and really trying to build a product that your, you know, your team and, and, and the people in the field would actually use based on the feedback that we're getting, not only from our customer base, but also our employees who we've done in the past. So hopefully, uh, you like what you see today, but you know this is this is for you. So feel free to ask any questions as we rip through it. Thanks, Francis. Yeah. Wesley. Yeah, and uh, I'm Wesley DeBose. Um, as Francis said, I also came from the industry. Um, I actually came from the construction side. Uh, I used to work for a contractor building large hospital projects in Texas, um, and not only with construction, but we also had a service department that I helped oversee. Um, so I'm very familiar with uh, facilities management and coordination of that work, and uh, hopefully can bring some open space use cases to y'all today to show you how you can have improved uh, facilities management. All right, let's get started. So as Francis, as Francis mentioned, please type in the chat, type in the Q&A box, um, just so we're aware of you know what's top of mind for you, what questions you have, or any comments, um, and we'll do our best to address them. But Francis, I'll kick it over to you and talk through you know, using open space for QAQC. Um, you know, I'm sure you'll probably want to give us a little sneak peek on how other customers are using using open space for virtual coordination of OM work. So tell me a little bit about that. Sure. Yeah, totally. So um, so basically to kind of go through this, I, th I think the the nice part about this product um, is, you know, um, there was a company told me they said we really like it because it helps us buy, build, manage, and sell. Right. So today we're going to be really talking more about like the manage and, and maybe some build uh, com co components of this, but that's essentially what we created, right? If you're looking at a potential acquisition, you can walk the site, you know, use field notes to cost estimate and, you know, all this jazz or even pre-bid walkthroughs, right? We've seen big use cases for that, um, you know, at things where you're looking before you even decide to, you know, put shovels in the ground or renovate a space. Uh, and then in terms of the whole um, kind of construction aspect of it, right, and the building side of it, uh, because uh, you use open space throughout the process as walls go up as you know ceilings get get, get take care of as concrete gets poured 
if you capture at any time pre and then post uh, those kind of items, you're going to have essentially what we call like a digital twin, the ability to see through those walls, through those floors, uh, et cetera. And that's been huge for, you know, of course, the managed side of the business, right? So facilities management, um, property managers, et cetera, because sadly enough, things like uh, the hurricane that just blazed through, um, you know, New York and such, right? Or even, you know, the, the sad stuff that happened down in Louisiana, right? People who potentially have used open space in the past can literally go and show up on site at any time with their cell phone and see through the walls of everything there. It's been huge for hospitals, obviously, being able to know exactly what's in the walls before they just go cutting things out. Um, obviously, big for insurance claims and things like that, seeing kind of past and then you know the current state of, of affairs of what they're looking at. Uh, but it saved people a lot of rework and a lot of time. Um, you know, in, in kind of reviewing the, the, the uh, you know, kind of the, the current state. And then, of course, during, you know, a building phase or, or even, you know, on a, a property management side, um, you know, facilities, you know, calling things out, right? I'm going to show you kind of a couple examples today of, of different ways people use field notes just with their cell phone, walking along, calling things out, addressing it with the team, maybe adding ad additional photos or attachments or how-to guides or whatever it may be, uh, all, with, uh, all within the product. So let me, um, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, Share my screen if that's all right, Georgie. Of course. So to kind of kick it off, I'm going to really start with the end in mind, right? So here's kind of a little, little idea of how what we call reveal mode works. So everything I was just talking about in terms of the ability to go back in time at any time and see through everything. So what you're doing is as you're walking with open space, which hopefully most of you have seen, you know, either on the website or what have you, how this typically works. You got a 360 camera, it's on your hard hat. You go for, you push one button, you go for a walk, everything gets captured. Um, on the management side, it gets a little different, right? Because you don't always need to walk around with a hard head on your camera. You may not want to be doing 360 necessarily, but you want to be kind of looking for things of those quick, you know, one-off like replacements or adjustments within the, within the asset. And the nice part is, you know, you can just show up at any time with stuff that's been pre-captured, you know, with open space as it was getting put together as the building was being built or what have you, or the reno was happening. And you can see through everything. So this guy here, he's holding up his cell phone. He's seeing through the wall. He's seeing through the floor, through the ceiling, right? And he knows what's behind all of this. So before he goes ripping that wall out, he kind of knows where the, the tension cables are. He knows what some of the electrical wires are run. You know, you can get an idea of like gas lines. It's a big one in hospitals and such is a pretty big liability for poking a hole in one of those. Um, so he's able to do that just with his cell phone and, and, and essentially panning around like a, a virtual reality type experience. This in of itself is a huge leap behind for the owner, right? For the facilities management teams, um, you know, to go ahead and utilize and have in their back pocket for the life of the asset, right? You can literally just take it out, show up on site. I can show up on site in any of these projects that have been previously captured. And I'm immediately, you know, kind of warped into this world of being able to see everything inside and then start to mark things up or review items. So to give you a little bit of an idea, I'm just going to kind of jump around a little bit here. Um, this is, this is kind of how people have been using us, right? And especially to call things how QAQC has been huge. So, you know, just to get you familiar with open spaces, as some people may or may not know, right? I can drive around it pretty easy. It's all 360 capture. There's tens of thousands of mini photos that are actually stitched together here. So I can kind of move forward or backwards in terms of the different frames. And then of course, as I'm sitting here at home, uh, I can go ahead and make a field note, right? And this is going to give you that kind of management aspect. Tie it into your favorite project management solution like Procore or BIM 360 or whatever it may be. It's going to pin it automatically to the plan. So there's none of this running around trying to figure out which poll they're asking about or which doorway. Um, it gives you kind of a nice high def type photo to review and mark up if you want to mark it up. Uh, and then you can say, hey, you know, please remove. And the tags in open space are all customizable, right? So if I want this to be a punch list item or maybe FF and E or whoever it's supposed to be attributed to, I can do that. I can attach um, files down here. I'll go over in a minute. And then of course you can create a due date. So it sets up an alert to notify the project teams or whomever else you have to get involved on this, right? If you need to get your drywaller in here to go ahead and, and, and kind of re, re adhere the wall or whatever it may be. You have those options. Um, and when you type in please remove, it's going to start a running chat thread, which is time and date stamped, right? And you can make it like this is an active red alert type of issue we got to deal with. Um, and I think definitely having it in the location has been very helpful. So this is me sitting at home remotely being able to do this. Now, the attachments field has been used in massive uh, ways. We just added it a couple of weeks ago, but you can attach anything from video files to like how to guides to these guys love attaching, you know, like carrier air conditioning installation equipment. You can type in when the installs happen. So then you can depreciate the, you know, essentially the, uh, the, uh, the information or the, the package over time, right? So it's like, oh, well, CVS just installed a bunch of uh, refrigerators here. They're going to be expired probably in eight years. We're going to have to redo it. I'll set up an alert to remind me to go back to CVS and, you know, 
rip, rip a couple of refrigerators out, right? And put in some new ones. So you can have all that data in here and it lives within the asset. So when I go back to reveal mode, I could be walking along and I could walk up to a fridge. I could pull up a field note. I can look at when it was installed. I can see all the past history um, and I'll, you know, I'll have that information. I know a, a fridge isn't the greatest issue, but that's about lunchtime here. So I'm kind of hungry. So that's how you'd be able to utilize kind of field notes, right? And you can also attach other photos that maybe other people have taken. It, it doesn't really matter. Now on the field, not only can I just create field notes walking around with my, with my phone, uh, but it's also pretty cool when you kind of point things out. So this guy here, he decided to point this out. You know, he, he sees like the bump in the pole here. Um, and I kind of jump right in and, uh, and, and look at like, you know, okay, we're seeing a little, and this is more, you know, kind of VWC, uh, VD, VWC issues, right? He says, hey, I'm still seeing quality issues here. Tags architectural, tags punch list. It's right in the location, tying it into Procore or just sharing the link with your team internally and you're off to the races. Um, on top of it, it's all stored in here, right? You got missing sconces, you got the tops the wrong size, right? And so as you're doing the, the Monday morning meetings or the QAQC run throughs, they're just punch lists, right? I can kind of filter all that here and I'm sitting here with everybody on the team going over a call. Hey, you know, it looks like we need cushions on this chair. Was that addressed? Let's take a look. I can jump over to it. I can see the location of where that was done, right? I can kind of move this forward a couple of weeks to see if it was taken care of or not. Uh, and then I'm able to kind of address it from there. So that gives you a little bit of an idea. The, the, the biggest thing I would take away from this though, is it's all customizable, right? So you can create any so, sort of tags you want on this. You can call it whatever you want that works for your team best. Everything's gonna be saved and live within the asset, right? So you can see all the kind of field notes and you don't need the 360 camera on your hard hat if you wanna create these. A lot of people just take out their cell phone, they snap a quick photo, it's automatically pinned to the plans, tied into Procore if you wanted it uh, and they make a field note and, and kind of an RFI or observation off of, off of, um, you know, off of those items there. So um, I'll pause there. I'm trying to see if um, just kind of any additional items I could share before we continue onward. Um, but I'll, I'll pause there. Uh, maybe, is there any questions that come through the, ch the chat there, Georgie? Not yet, but while we're waiting, I think, you know, adding that it's that field notes are customizable is super important. They're very flexible. You can take them, like Francis mentioned, right on site, or if you're, you know, traveling and all you have is your mobile device, you can just you know, point to where you'd like a, a screenshot to be taken and then alert people right away. That way they get a link to that field note and they're taken to the 360 degree location of it. Um, so yeah, being able, they're so versatile, you you can remove any tags, add any tags that you need and then filter and report on that. Um, so I think yeah. just making it, making it quick, making it easy is really valuable. Um, so I think you touched on everything there. What about you, right. Wesley? Anything that you wanna highlight there? Or? Yeah, um, I think that uh, first, Francis, can maybe show them how to pull a field note report, um, how to get that PDF document there, uh, just yeah, so they know um, how to kind of collect all their field notes in one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. So um, let me go ahead and pull that. So so real quick, um, you know, obviously we can integrate with BIM and everything like that for coordination issues. This has been kind of a huge uh, saving grace for a lot of people because sometimes what's happening on the left isn't what's happening on the right. Um, so you can kind of call those out, use the different measuring tools and stuff like that. But with field notes, you can see one kind of up here. Um, as mentioned, you know, I can go into the field notes button here. I can essentially type in, um, you know, a filter by certain tags or whatever it may be, right? And then I can generate a field notes report. Uh, and what you're going to get is kind of a, a printout uh, a PDF like this. So it'll have your own branding and everything. I think that's a pretty good marketing component, right? So if you want to share this with the owner, or you want to share this with the team members, it's going to have your information on this, right? Because you're bringing this to them as kind of uh, something that they can, they can go ahead and, and utilize. Um, so it will have your information there. Um, it's going to show kind of the different priorities, right? So these are red alert items. You know, we got to get, we got to address this tomorrow. This is something maybe we can push out. And because it's all customizable, right? So if you think about multifamily and things like that, maybe you just have, you're doing a couple of unit turns, unit rentals, right? You're doing some paint, maybe some carpet um, and some fixtures or what have you. Uh, and then, and then you want to get it like ready for, for lease. So you can go ahead and as Georgia was saying, it's all shareable and I can tie it to other teammates and say, hey, just finished room 103. Um, you know, it's, it's ready for, for lease up and you can kind of complete that room off the list, for instance, right? So, and share that publicly if you wanted, right? We can filter different ways to share public links to tie to apartments.com or something like that and give them a little bit of drive through uh, if they wanted. But ultimately the field notes is kind of, you know, we, we build the framework for you and then you use it to customize the way you in your business see fit. Um, if I look at a field note like here, missing structural steel, I can jump straight to the field note. It's going to kind of show me the information, who created it, you know, what's the issue? It looks like we're missing some structural steel. It's probably a pretty big issue. It shows me the location. So anybody, any uh, Johnny on the spot can show up and know exactly where to go on the plans 
Um, and then of course I can click view in open space if I wanted to, and it'll drive me right back into the project, into the open space area. And because you control the data or the process, uh, you also control the users and what they're able to see, do, and edit uh, as well. So I could jump back in here. Maybe you only want them looking at this one field note or this one item. They're not going to be able to see all kind of the other stuff on the project, um, which is a nice way to kind of uh, to coordinate with, um, you know, with, with those team members or with maybe those contractors or, or subs. Super valuable. Thank you, Francis. Um, anyone that's on the line that has comments, questions, if you're currently doing this for your process or um, if you have any questions about anything that we just covered, please let us know. Uh, but I'll go back and share my screen and we'll continue this conversation and talk about minimizing downtime. So I'm gonna pass it, pass it over to you, Wesley, um, to talk a little bit about you know, building life cycle costs. And you know, I know you had a lot of experience with this um, at your previous construction company, but how is open space yeah. fitting into Thank that? you, Georgie. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and commandeer screen control from you. Um, so today I want to talk to everybody about building life cycle cost and how you can use open space to help minimize downtime on your facilities. Um, so starting off, uh, what is a building life cycle cost? For those of you who uh, may be unaware of the term, um, a building life cycle cost is the total cost of a facility ownership. Um, so all the way from conception, design, construction, through the operation and maintenance, maintenance of the facility throughout its lifetime, all the costs associated with that will make up a building's life cycle cost. Um, you can kind of separate building life cycle cost into two separate buckets. Um, on average, a building's life cycle cost will be about 30% attributed to design and construction and 70% to operation and maintenance. Um, this is kind of a jarring number. Uh, I kind of didn't believe it the first time I saw it, um, you know, working on, you know, $67 million hospital projects. I would think that's a pretty large number. It's going to be hard to top that with O&M. Um, but if you look at the cost uh, attributed to a facility just over the lifetime of all the O&M work you do, uh, the majority of that cost ends up actually being on the O&M and the facility's maintenance side. Um, so you can see really right here that uh, why facilities management is so critical. Um, you really want to get the maximum utilization of your facility uh, and ensure that you are getting the most use out of the 70% cost and you're, you're keeping it as low as possible. Um, which is why I think facilities management is such an important field that people kind of overlook in the construction industry. Um, now you might notice on the second bullet point right here in the parentheses, I put not including human capital costs. Um, so you can actually uh, factor a building's life cycle cost into three buckets if you want, where you include the human capital costs as well. What your human capital costs are, are the cost of all the employees and staff within the building. So the salaries of all the employees, the wages, um, and what you're paying them to work and utilize the facility. Now, if you include human capital cost into the equation, you can see that the human capital makes up the vast majority of a building's life cycle cost. Um, design and construction and maintenance together uh, make up about 10%, while the salaries and wages of all your employees that will be utilizing the facility um, makes up about 90% of that total building life cycle cost. Now, why is this so important uh, when, as it pertains to facilities management and open space? Well, anytime that you shut down part of a facility to go and do some O&M work, you're kicking personnel out of that part of the facility, which they can then not utilize, and you're cutting into that 90%. Um, you're just, you know, you're paying these people to utilize the facility, but you're taking away part of the facility for them to utilize and uh, make the most of their work hours. Um, so how can open space fit in? Uh, well, open space can be used to virtually coordinate your facility's management work ahead of time, uh, minimizing the time that you actually have to have workers out of an area of your facility to go and do, do the actual work. Um, I made an example for us here to kind of show you how you can utilize this feature. So on this project right here, you can see that this is a telephone room. And let's say hypothetically, the duct run out going to this diffuser is too small and it's producing too much noise going to the, through the diffuser for reasonable phone calls to be made. Um, so you need to go in here and you need to upsize the duct running to this diffuser to lower that air pressure. Well, you can go ahead and just as Francis was showing, create a field note to start tracking this issue. So you can see I have the picture right here. It's giving me the floor plan. I assigned a status to it. I can add any team members that I want to be notified um, for this field note. I created a facilities management tag so I can easily filter by the uh, field notes that, that pertain to my facilities management work. Uh, put in the due date 
And then you can see in the description right here, I just put this is a facilities management tracker for the work to be performed on this duct and diffuser in this room. And then I went ahead and put in a comment just showing exactly what needs to be done. So duct run out uh, needs to be upsized and then see the attached document for the above ceiling configuration. So what I did here is I went to a previous capture in the same room to before ceiling tile was hung. I downloaded a PDF report of it and then attached it to this field note um, just to provide information of what's above that ceiling. So if I go ahead and click on this PDF, it's gonna show up here. And you can see this PDF report shows me what is above that ceiling. So here is this duct with the run out here. And this can allow me to see everything I need to virtually coordinate this work. Um, so instead of having to shut down that part of the facility, you know, kicking people out of the room and area to go in and remove ceiling tiles to see what's actually there, uh, you can eliminate all that by just looking at this document, seeing, okay, this is what's going on above the ceiling. I can see there's a cable tray running under this duct. Um, so that's something that's going to need to be taken care of if I'm going to be going above it and removing this duct and replacing it with a larger duct. Um, so this kind of allows you to see all of these issues, think about them and plan ahead of time. Uh, to where you can have your work fully coordinated and the only time you're actually having to shut down your facility is whenever you go in to do the actual work. Um, so it really helps minimize that downtime and ensure that uh, you know you're spending less time kicking workers out of the facility and giving more time back to you know that personal staff that 90% of that building life cycle cost. Um, they're back in the building working utilizing it and uh, you know putting your uh, organization's money to good use. Now, beyond that, you can also use uh, field notes as kind of a living, breathing document for facilities management tracking. So let's say uh, this issue has now been completed. I can type in the comment right here. Completed, I can hit send, and it'll show me who said that and when they said it. And then I could come in here and if I'm the person that remediated this work and I took a completion picture of this work, I can come in here and attach a file and upload a picture showing that the work has been completed. I can come in here and change the status to complete. And you can see this kind of becomes, uh, you know, instead of just stagnant historical record of what your uh, facility used to look like, it kind of makes it a living, breathing document where maybe you may, you may be done with open space captures, uh, but you can still use field notes to update pictures. So you can see every time I've gone above the ceiling, I can have this record right here, go back and see what was there and have an accurate record of what is behind that wall, what's above that ceiling, what's been done here before. Um, and it's all really nicely placed in open space because it's mapped to your floor plans. Um, it's really easy to tell where you are and there's no, not really any um, room or excuse for uh, miscommunication um, and what exactly is happening in your facility. Uh, so that pretty much covers it for me, Georgie. I'll go ahead and pass it back. That was great. I, I... I like your use of saying it's a living, breathing document because it is. You can update it. You can continue to, to see what's complete, what still needs to be taken care of, and then include you know photos, attachments, and it's it's simple. I think it's very manageable. Um, Francis, I know there were a few things that you wanted to touch on as well. Um, if you wanted to go ahead, yeah, sure. So um, <clears throat> apologies, I may have I may have uh, you know uh, ran before we walked. So uh, I, I, want, I kind of want to give some of the people on the call. Uh, we had a a, a lovely. Um, question from Christina um, over there at Columbia Construction. So I know we, uh, your team uses us pretty heavily there, which is great, uh, but I wanted to kind of take a step back. Uh, the open space for dummies is very, uh, thank you for, thank you for opening up to the rest of us and letting us know <laughs> that's what you'd like to see. So uh, I'll go ahead and uh, I'll kind of just show you just a two second idea of like really how we've, uh, we've built this product. I'm going to make sure really anybody can pick it up. Oddly enough, I had my uh, three-year-old niece a couple of weeks ago walk a, a property that I was looking to purchase uh, with it. So yeah, uh, hopefully, hopefully this, that will kind of ease uh, any, uh, any concerns on, on maybe the, the difficulty in the use case here. Um, so to give you an idea, right, we kind of, we kind of showed the overall product, um, you know, in terms of some of the additional features, but just the base product in the, in the, in the, uh, or the product that, that you would get with this, uh, that includes everything we just showed the way to capture, um, we made it as easy as possible. So again, you don't need cellular, you don't need Wi-Fi. It connects to the hard hat camera on your head. Um, a lot of people will actually use this without a hard hat camera, right? They'll use a selfie stick or they'll carry it around or what have you. So you don't need to mess your hair up uh, if you don't need a hard hat on, on campus. Um, and so what it happens is you connect your phone to the hard hat camera. It's a Wi-Fi connection, oddly enough. Uh, so it's its own hotspot. But again, you don't need outside cellular or Wi-Fi to use this. Uh, and what you do is, you know, we send the whole kit to you. You push one button that shows you the location you're at on the plans. If you have plans, if you don't, you don't need them either. Uh, and it will automatically map to the plans 
um, your walking path and give you within 15 minutes of sometimes a, a Google Street View environment to drive along <clears throat> and take a look at everything that's going on on site. Right. So it's a quick way. I mean, not only from like people just who need to review facilities. Right. So I have some customers that are literally doing one time walks in big retail centers, you know, this year because, you know, investors and such want to know what they look like, given that um, <laughs> retail hospitality and such has been a little, um, you know, a little slow last year during COVID and such. Uh, so they want to get an idea of what, what all the facilities look like, any upgrades that they need to do. So this is a great starting point. And then you can jump off from there and you can go in and show up on site. Um, and either use the camera on your hard hat or you can just use the field notes function that we showed earlier to kind of address some more uh, more prevalent issues and call them out. So that's how the product works at a whole, as a whole. Um, obviously, our team, our number one goal is to make sure that people are successful with this. The first thing we do is, um, you know, we'll go ahead and we'll upload any of the, the project information you have, just like the, uh, the plans. We can also tie it into a BIM model if you have that. We'll train all the members uh, of your team or outside teams that you want to have in there. You can give them limited or full access. Um, and, then, and then we do like biweekly check-ins and have like a phone number you can reach out to or email or chat support. So our goal is to make you successful, um, but coming from Procore and, and being in the industry for a little while, um, the reason I chose here is because for the user, in my opinion, uh, it, it's really pretty simple to just jump on board, get started and go walking uh, and, and giving you kind of hands-free type, uh, type experience there. So, um, oh, okay. And, uh, and uh, Christina looks like she had another question here. Uh, the walking path does not have to be the same every time. So that's, that's kind of a nice feature, right? So if I, uh, let me just back over here um, and I'll kind of show you, uh, give you a better idea. So just a second. So um, just minimizing this, actually, maybe I'll bring this out too. So, so one of the companies that we work with had, had done a huge uh, demonstration on the amount of time it takes to capture typically manually versus with open space. So typically a manual 360 or cell phone snapshots could take about 36 minutes per 10,000 square feet. This should take you about a minute uh, to six minutes per 10,000 square feet. So if you think about your budget, the amount of time and hours wasted on just manually capturing uh, definitely can, can kind of dig into that. Whereas this, it would automate it and obviously give everybody remote visibility all over the world that you wanted to invite in. Um, and then to your point about, do we have to capture in the same spot every single time? Uh, you don't, that's kind of the nice part about it, right? So I can actually pop this open I can see what somebody's gone ahead and walked it prior to. And then I can see that they didn't capture here, right? But what if I want to see what's happened here? Well, I can click in here and it says, hey, the nearest image is on June 1st. That was the last time we captured in this location. I can jump straight to that image, right? So now I'm sitting here and just jumped straight in there, right? So I can see, take a look at what that looks like. And then on top of it, it gives you an easy way to essentially, you know, if I, uh, let me jump into this uh, other project here. Uh, where are we? So it gives you an easy way to essentially fan through um, you know, the list of, of different like sheets and floors <clears throat> to see what, uh, what areas haven't been captured essentially, right? So I can go ahead and, um, you know, if I wanna go ahead and, you know, kind of flip to this, I can see the dates we captured on, the locations we captured on, the different, the, the different plans, uh, things like that. And then the areas we haven't captured. So it can tell me, you know, hey, you know, we, last time we captured floor one was a while ago, right? Maybe we wanna kind of get in here and do these kind of other areas. Um, things like that. So it should give you kind of an idea of not only is it give you the control to, you don't necessarily have to walk the same path every time, but you, it will also show you kind of, you know, where you walked on these different kind of paths. Maybe you want to cover in here, right? Cause you didn't do that as often. I can jump to that 360 image. So it gives you that flexibility where again, all you need to do is you push a button and you, you go for a walk. Okay. There you go. Yeah, that was a good question, though. That's uh, that's helpful. That was a great question, Christina. Um, please. I mean, that, sorry. One one thing I would also say with that, um, just to close. Excuse me, Georgie. But um, oh. <clears throat> the other nice part is because you're essentially creating an MP4 video that will go ahead and then slice it up into thousands of individual photos, right? So every half a second, there's two photos being taken and stitched together. It also gives you the uh, opportunity to not miss anything, right? So Maybe you don't do the same walking path every time, but like, you know, you, there's something specific as you're traveling along on those halos. You want to go like three steps back. You can just back up real quick and boom, you'll be right on that kind of location, right? So then when you're comparing the two photos side by side, maybe you didn't walk the same location. So one photo is like, you know, a little further over there and, and this one's over here, but you want to kind of compare them side by side. You can actually just kind of bump it up a little bit and then line them up as best as possible to be able to see before and afters. Uh, without having to like stick to the same route every single time, right? You just want to throw it in your hard hat and get moving.
All right, so now I'll pause and, and, and see if there are any questions, any comments. Um, this is an open forum. It doesn't have to be related to what we just spoke about. It can be anything. Um, that was the end of the presentation piece and what we wanted to cover. So please jump in with, with questions or comments and we'll, we'll be here to help. And while we're waiting, uh, do you wanna share that our next webinar uh, will be on the 22nd? And it's an exciting one because we're gonna be talking about clear site progress tracking and how it can help with billings and preventing delays. Um, so we will continue to send you those emails you know, from our marketing, marketing team so everyone has the registration link and the information that they need, but uh, please let us know if there are any questions today or see some people are dropping off. Uh, really appreciate everyone's time in the middle of the day on a Wednesday. I know it was a short week uh, for those of you that had Labor Day off. Um, looks like we do have a question. Are previous webinars available? Yes, Christina, thank you for asking that. Um, I will throw it in the chat right now, um, but also everyone will be receiving an email with a, the recording of today's webinar. And there also will be a link to all of the previous webinars and recordings. Uh, so thank you for asking that. And thank you, Gretchen. Uh, the webinar from the UK at 7 a.m. this morning. Um, yes, you are welcome to go to the UK, UK webinars as well. Hope, hope that answered your question, Gretchen. Um, uh, and then- I'm seeing a question here from Jake about uh, being able to relocate a field node if it uh, got placed in the wrong location. Um, I'll go ahead and commandeer your screen control real quick. Yeah, great question, Jake. Yeah, so you can uh, relocate field notes. Um, so let's, uh, if you click on a field note, so for instance, this is the field note uh, I used in the example, and you can see I moved it over a little bit just so hypothetically it's in the wrong position. If you want to relocate it, you can hit this more actions button and then hit move field note. But you can see we can't quite see the duct. Um, so if I click up here, you can see it's still not quite getting me all the way there. And you would have to do that again. But we also have another way of doing this where you can open up your split view functionality here in the bottom right. And this splits your view into two different panes. You can then unlock your view. And then on the other pane, you can go to where the field note needs to be located. Open the field note on one side, hit that move notes to location, and then you can drop it on the other side. Um, so there is a way to correct field note positioning if it's ever a little off. Yeah, great question, Jake. Happy to stay on the line for a few more minutes. Please keep the questions coming or any comments. Also, if you have any requests on upcoming webinar topics, I'm all ears. Oh, uh, let me try again here one more time, just so I can, uh, can you see my screen okay, Georgie? Yeah. Okay, uh, so just another quick refresher on that. Um, if you wanna relocate a field note, you can just click on the field note. Uh, I, I wanna confirm first. Um, okay, you can see it now too. All right, yeah. uh, so if you open up your field note, you can click on these three dots in the top right and hit this move notes location button. And this will allow you to move the tab of your field note anywhere in your capture. And then also there's gonna be some times where you wanna move a field note, but it's uh, the, the field note's true location is more than what you can travel with, with what you're currently seeing on your desktop. Um, so to do that, you can open up your split view functionality and then unclick on this lock button in the middle. And then on one side of your split view, you can go to where the field note needs to be located. And on the other side, you can open up the field note click on that move notes location button and then just drop it on the other pane and that'll move the field note to the correct location in the capture. So we have a question here from Craig. Um, is it possible to link report summaries and field notes to Procore? Um, so great question there. Uh, so you can link individual field notes to Procore. If you open up your field note, and once you set up your Procore integration, you can see at the top here,
there's this link to Procore button. If you click right here, uh, let me log in through Procore really quick. And then while he's doing that, you can also link reports to the documents tool. So I see a lot of customers doing that. They'll you know create their reports, put them in the documents tool. They'll have like a um, you know open space reports or OAC. So absolutely. And we'll go ahead and click on the note here. And now that I'm logged in through Procore, you can click on this link to Procore button. And this will allow you to link field notes directly to RFIs or field observations in Procore. Um, so you can see I can either link them to brand new observations or RFIs or link them to existing ones. Um, so for instance, if I click on link new RFI here, this will bring up a window giving me all the normal population fields I usually have to fill out for a field note in Procore. And then if I scroll down to the bottom here, you can see the question is what I typed in the description box for that field note. And then it also includes that PDF attachment of the field note, which we can go ahead and view it. And you know, your subs, anyone that can see this in Procore that has access to the RFI or observations tool will be able to see this. Um, and this is what that PDF report looks like. Um, so you can see it uh, gives you a picture of the issue, where in the floor plan you're standing, what direction you're looking in, what floor you're on, who created it when, and the due date, status, description, and tag you've assigned to it. Um, really useful for things like RFIs. I know whenever I used to have to make RFIs, I'd pull my drawings up in Bluebeam, get my superintendent to text me a picture of the issue, insert the picture on the floor plan, insert text boxes and arrows all over the place to orient people. Um, this can help eliminate that process where you can just click on one button and you have a document that's good to go for an RFI. You can also link them to field observations as well. Um, as far as the overall field note reports that include multiple field notes in one, uh, that would be more of a hard link where you would pull that field note report, download it, and then just manually upload it into Procore. Um, but do know that our product team is aware of the punch list functionality and the field note report functionality. And there is plans to uh, integrate with Procore's punch list function as well and uh, assist in that reporting. Thanks, Wesley, and great question, Craig. All right. Well, we'll give everyone some time back in your day, but again, really appreciate everyone's time today. Um, if there are any other questions that we didn't get to answer, please reach out to myself, uh, Francis, or Wesley. It's all of our names at openspace.ai. So happy to help and then also support at openspace.ai. Um, any questions that you have and our support team will route you to the appropriate person if they cannot help. Um, but thank you again for everyone's time and then really appreciate all of you. Have a great rest of your week. Thank you.